When it comes to defining Sony's PlayStation consoles, Insomniac Games have played a crucial role, creating such integral franchises as Ratchet and Clank and Spyro the Dragon. Insomniac are now stretching out with their first multi-platform title, Fuse. Ditching cuddly platforming for more visceral action in the vein of resistance, does Fuse manage to create a spark? Why would a private military contractor like Raven send in one robot? Beats me. Brooks, you work for him. You know, I unsubscribed from their newsletter. Blending the sly humor of Ratchet and Clank with the brooding action of Resistance, Fuse depicts the actions of a sinister corporation known as Raven, who continue to experiment with a mysterious alien substance. Boasting the capabilities to form devastating new weapons and human augmentations, the threat of the Raven Corporation continues to grow. Fortunately, the members of anti-terrorism agency Overstrike 9 are out to stop Raven in their tracks. Formed of four agents, each boasting a unique ability, Overstrike 9 ventures deep into the heart of the Raven Corporation to shut them down for good. Truth be told, the plot of Fuse is fairly derivative, but the quirky interaction between the Overstrike 9 provides some welcome humor. This isn't how I imagined it. You in a cell and me... me as the jailer. I always thought we'd stay a team. You stopped being a team when you decided to partner up with psychopaths. Whilst the plot is a forgettable mishmash of sci-fi cliches, Fuse aims to please with its frantic cover base shooting. Playing as one of the four different operatives, you'll explore vast and varied environments filled with incredible weaponry, waves of enemies and stupendous boss battles. Borrowing heavily from such games as Gears of War, Army of Two and Mass Effect 3, there might not be anything that seems distinctly new about the cover-based mayhem of Fuse. However, it's the interaction between its quirky cast that differentiates Fuse from the crowd. Play alone and you're free to leap between characters at any time, with each one bringing significant changes to gameplay. Jumping into battle as team leader Dalton lets you wield a trusty mag shield, which provides instant cover and repels bullets back towards the enemies. Alternatively, Jacob acts as the team sniper, equipped with a deadly arc shot crossbow. Elsewhere, assassin Naya has the ability to become invisible through a cloaking device, while Isabel can heal her teammates with portable med beacons. Leaping between the four characters at will is enjoyable, but clumsy AI and a lack of an engaging story makes playing alone tiresome. Clearly built from the ground up as a co-op experience, jumping into Fuse with a group of friends reveals a far more enjoyable experience. It's here where Fuse suddenly shows promise, and with its dedicated co-op camaraderie, the forgettable story and weak AI become insignificant. With a group of friends in tow, Fuse can become a genuine blast. Along with the 8-10 to hour campaign, Fuse also features its own take on the horde mode of Gears of War in the form of its dedicated Echelon mode. Taking place within condensed environments from the campaign, Echelon allows players to take on waves of increasingly tough enemies whilst earning plenty of rewards in the process. With all the visual polish that you'd come to expect from any EA title, Fuse certainly looks like the big budget blockbuster that it clearly aspires to be. But while there's no shortage of visual pizzazz, it's fair to say that the generic level design, complete with plenty of drab industrial complexes, stifles the game's attempt to find its own voice in an already crowded market. Originally previewed several years ago as a colourful Team Fortress-style comic book shooter titled Overstrike, Fuse has ended up with a far less unique visual aesthetic. What spurred this change in direction remains unclear, but fortunately the distinctive humour and outlandish weaponry mostly remain intact.